In the Linux community, we have two main desktop environment camps. There's KDE and GNOME, the GNOME shell, GNOME 3, whatever you want to call it. And currently, we are at version 43. Today, we are going to take a look at GNOME 43 on GNOME OS, so stick around. Jay, and you're watching DS Tech Media, where we cover everything tech, focusing on Linux and open source. We are going to be checking out GNOME 43, codenamed Guadalajara. I personally have always been a fan of GNOME-based desktops. Uh, I'm currently using Ubuntu. I am on GNOME 3.28, and I am still running Ubuntu 18.04 because I am terribly notorious for using what works, basically. I rely on VMs extensively to uh, test out new stuff. The best way that i found to do so is gnome os nightly this is os.gnome.org they have a download option it only works on real hardware or flat hub boxes so you need the flat hub version this is gnome boxes it uses linux kernels kvm hypervisor they actually give you a handful of options here and the gnome os nightly if you click this it will download the latest nightly build i'm uh just gonna use the image i already have downloaded and we just gotta hit create start booting yes agree to erasing was successful so we're gonna i guess take the tour my first thoughts everything that was in that tour is kind of useless it even said gnome os nightly and if you're using nightly chances are you knew everything that was in that tour the major changes with uh, GNOME 43 and actually 42, technically we're going to be looking at 42 and 43, is the move to GTK 4. If you're not familiar, GTK is the visual widget and toolkit. It's integral to GNOME. Also, Adwaita or Adwaita is GNOME's theme and look, colors, palette, whatever. They've added a library called libadwaita. So the first thing that I notice is now the dock is basically hidden in the activities view. Up here at the top, when we click in the panel, it has been completely redone. And we now have a system-wide dark mode. You can change wired to Wi-Fi up here as well. And there's a power control. We've got balanced or power saver and volume controls. You could switch audio inputs and outputs up here. And if this was a laptop, we'd be able to turn on the Bluetooth settings and deal with all that here. We would also have the nightlight and airplane mode options up here. We do have the screenshot app up here redesigned as well. We can select what we want to screenshot. We can do the whole screen or a specific window. Even cooler is we now have screen cast so we can record the screen. And up top, you can see how long you've been recording. Click that, it's done. Click here to see the video. It records in the web media format. Okay, let's go up here and switch to dark mode. Not only does it switch the color of your windows, but the uh, wallpaper as well. And these are all the wallpapers that they ship with it. 
each one of these is a double because it switches based on whether or not you have bright or dark theme on. All of these are the new icons, which I've got to say I like a lot better than the old icons. A big part of GTK4 is adaptive windowing. So when we drag this window over and we run out of space, just like a responsive web page, the menu goes away. This is everything that we have installed. The apps that have been updated to GTK4 are the uh, disk usage analyzer, the fonts, calendar, clocks, the software center, characters, contacts, uh, the weather, The weather appears below the calendar in the notification center. That is really cool. So I really like that. I just wish that we could get the uh, color look that we see in the app itself in this. That would be a nice touch. App icon preview. Go ahead and install that one. Oh yeah, files, maps, and gnome builder so i'll have to install builder as well the gnome maps has been updated to use a entirely new render engine and you can export the maps as images and i like it it's actually very detailed they also have added vCard support to the contacts. You know, that's kind of the standard. And now you can import the way you would on a phone. Okay, so this is app icon preview. Oh, I see. So if I had an SVG for an app icon designed, it would kind of put it in context for me. The redesigned calendar app is actually quite nice. It just makes a lot more sense. I'm not going to go through syncing my calendars, but I think uh, just from looking at it, you can probably see it's much more modern looking. If we go to the software center, not a ton has changed, but the look is definitely updated. I really like the colors. If you go to about software, any app that gives you this vertical larger dialogue is a GTK4, whereas uh, system monitor is the uh, older style so that's one way uh, you can tell them apart the software center itself has a fresher look and you'll notice in general with uh, gtk4 we've got rounded corners on the app windows it's pretty common now i'd say most devices are kind of going that way and for each app we've got a lot of information down here we can see this one was updated a day ago uh, we've got installed size permissions and also up top here you'll notice that this says gnome nightly in other apps they'll say a uh, flat pack from flat hub and in this gnome os distro the only thing we have are flat hub and the gnome nightly but if this were ubuntu we'd have the ubuntu repos or the fedora repos whatever and that would also be available here in this little list previously you could use gnome's web application originally called epiphany there was an option to see it's grayed out but install site as a web application that has been integrated and improved in gnome 43 you can even install web applications from the software center there's a section now of pics from the web and oh, here's one that i know uh, stack edit and see it says here it works on phones tablets and desktops it's even listed as GNOME Web. I'm going to go ahead and install it, pin it to the dash. So uh, Stack Edit is a, a web-based markdown editor. So you can edit markdown online. And let's see what other ones they had in here. Uh, let's try uh, Excalibur. It's just a web-based drawing app. We'll be seeing, I guess, more apps added over time. The Secrets app wasn't really aware of it, but it's a password manager and security safe 
I guess you can transfer keys or your passwords or whatever you have in your safe between computers with this. It actually gives you the option to generate a password. You can also use a key file. Oh, okay, so we could add, I guess, like YouTube here. Give it a color and we can give it an icon too. And we can add attachments and we can add an expiration date. I like that a lot. I honestly didn't notice this one before. This is connection. It's for using remote desktops and you can connect to Mac, Windows or Linux. Computers need to be set up for a remote before you can connect to them. We hope you enjoy connections. So I guess that this is kind of a replacement for Remina. And okay, we've got RDP and VNC. Oh, another improvement to GNOME 43 is they now have audio support for RD. Before you couldn't have audio over that remote connection and now you can. So that's a welcome change. One of the apps most far along in GTK4 development is files. It benefits from the responsive design. So when you collapse it, the side menu disappears and you can bring it back with this. The back and forth buttons are moved down to the bottom and the list or grid views also moves down to the bottom. The open with dialogue has been totally revamped, changed the always use or open with different applications. Uh, properties has also been redone. Uh, you used to have tabs here for the different things. Now got the parent folder and we can open that with that click. Access modified and created is here and permissions is see the permission you have or click that and get the rest of the permissions. Also, you got the image properties. They're all here as well, and it's a lot cleaner. So if you click the search icon here, we can search just up here, but we now have a filter. We can select dates, last modified, last used or created. And then under anything, we can pick from files, folders, document, illustration, music, PDF, postscript, picture, presentation, spreadsheet, nice and specific uh, search function. I really like that. Probably the most important thing is the rubber banding. So even if we're in list view, we can uh, use rubber banding to select multiple files. This is something that has been missing in Nautilus for a while now. Also, we can drag and drop, which was another thing you couldn't do in the icon view. And another thing, you can undo your last option. So if we deleted files and we wanted to undo that, that's in the drop down menu now. There's more sorting abilities in the recent folder. So you can actually uh, find and search things in your recent if you have a lot going on. So that's a nice change installed gnome builder just so i can give you a demo of this they've got selected gnome projects set this up and we're going to clone the repository and this has been totally updated builder is the gnome projects ide or integrated development environment it's packed with everything you need to build on the gnome tool chain and even outside of it i don't know enough about it to properly demonstrate it but you can do everything uh, necessary to not only build software but push the software to github or gitlab uh, it has a built-in console and built-in terminal that is fully functional And it actually allows you to toggle between dark or bright or the automatic change it's got a bunch of built-in themes, very modern looking and full of tools. Here's the to do fix me. One of these could potentially be the uh, issue that's stopping me from running and showing you the audio or sound recorder. <laughs> and like I said, I'm not familiar enough with builder, but this is another app that's received a lot of attention as far as being updated for the GNOME 43 build. Two other brand new core applications that come installed with GNOME OS 
are the console and the text editor. So the console is the replacement for the GNOME terminal. Honestly, this I think is in a very early iteration. The only thing really special about it is that you can switch between bright and dark. Kind of worthless at present. Wait, 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 wait. Turns out I was lying. The detail that I left out is the color of the terminal header changes if you are root. And I figured that was important enough to mention. Other than that, it's definitely not on par with the current GNOME terminal, but I'm sure they'll be making improvements to it as time goes on. Uh, the text editor is a bit of a different story. It gets the same day and night bright and dark options and also color theme options. I actually really do like some of these. They're not bad at all. I will say that zooming in, making the text larger is just butter smooth. There's a lot of little things, little intangibles about GTK4. You have to, to use them to really understand them. Let's see, we can show line numbers, right margin, you can indent with tabs or spaces, text wrapping, spell check, and the document type is CSS. And here's everything that you can uh, set it to. Wow, pretty good list. A lot of programming languages and dialects here. Let's open the preferences up. Display grid pattern, highlight current line, display overview map. If you're working on a big document, good to have an overview map because you can get to wherever you're at editing. And I actually kind of like the grid pattern too. I guess it's kind of worthless in the bright mode. But yeah, the text editor, it's probably not on feature parity with Gedit just yet. Very, very good looking, very modern. I like it. And so there you have it, folks. That is GNOME OS with GNOME 43. There's a lot of promising work. Very modern looking compared to what Windows 11 looks like. Uh, criticisms of it. GNOME tends to try and minimize too much, whereas KDE will often give you way too many options. So it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. A lot of it is very nuanced. Uh, I think you'd probably have to test it out to really see what it's all about. That being said, getting it running in boxes was a little bit difficult. You cannot use 3D acceleration. I had to delete the VM and start all over. Let me know. Which one do you like? Do you like GNOME? Do you like KDE? Be sure to check back. I have videos in the pipeline trying to dedicate more time to making videos. I built the new studio. Some things I got to finish up over there. But if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Would love to hear from you in the comments. Consider subscribing. Appreciate everyone who does subscribe. It makes it all worth it. Uh, until next time, this is DS Tech Media, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.